I just got the air conditioner fixed during the week. Uh, I got the dash repaired. Got all the door locks and buttons and windows working. But to drive it around, it's got to have some tires on there. And I really don't want to spend the money on tires. So I took the tires off my Bronco and threw them on here. Those are brand new. So, uh, now these are hardcore tires. These are the Cooper ST Pros. <laughs> these are some gnarly, gnarly tires. Noisy. Um, yeah. This isn't something you want to put on a daily driver. Excellent off-road tire. Um, I've gone through gnarly tires before. They look good, but they don't last very long. What I would prefer to put on there would be something like this, and a mild all-terrain. This is the Pro Comp AT Sport. Um, one thing about those tires, those are made in Taiwan. I don't like putting on imported tires. I kind of like to support the American worker here, you know, buy made in USA. So, if I were to put tires on here, um, the tire down from this would be the Cooper GT Max. I had those on my Tacoma. Those were a good all-around tire. Not as, as aggressive, but still as, as aggressive. It was a, those are a, an AT in all-terrain. The GT Max, good tire. They were wearing pretty good, quiet. And then the third tire that I tried that I really like was the Cooper AT3s. The AT3s was kind of uh, one level up between an all-terrain and, and a street tire. Really good off-road. Excellent on the highway, in the rain, mountain roads. Got some really good mileage off them. So I was looking for some at, for this truck here, but they don't come in a 15 inch wheel. They only come in, I think, 17, 18s. Well, that's no good. You know, what, eight and 10 ply? This truck doesn't need an eight or 10 ply tire. It's just gonna eat up your gas mileage. Like these tires here. These are what, eight ply thing. Heavy ass tire. A little truck like this doesn't need a, no, these are 10 ply. Yeah, doesn't need a heavy tire like that. But that's all I had of that size. It's an 18 inch wheel. Um, what I really need is the air conditioner working. This is the compressor, this is the clutch. When you flip the switch on inside, yeah, this has an electromagnetic clutch on there. Should engage and the whole thing should spin. But uh, yeah, so uh, I checked it out when I first got it. You know, let's see if we got any power, right? So I got power here, so this should engage. See that? Should catch and spin the whole thing. The whole thing should spin with the pulley, but it's not. So I'm going to disconnect it here and just run a couple jumpers over the battery and see if I can activate this manually. Because it should come on. Correcto? Oh guys, this is one way to check it. Just energize it manually, right? So uh, I'm on the battery over there. Got a little jumper wire. I'm clipped onto the little pin in there. You see inside there? Got a positive and a negative, right? And uh, clip this one on the other side. Shouldn't matter which way it goes, but well, guys. First attempt failed with my jumper wires, and the reason was bad jumper wires. Look at these things. 
No contact. Look at the way they're crimped on there. I've seen this done before. Yep. So now I got some other leads and now it's working. And uh, guess what? That works. Hey, that's what's supposed to happen. So now I gotta find out. Hmm. If I'm getting power to the plug, maybe I'm not getting um. There it is, right there. Uh, see? Gotta double check yourself all the time. Dumbbell. Alright, so I don't get power. Alright, so uh, I finally figured this out. You know, it's a learn as you go thing. So I got a pressure switch right here, right? This is called the compressor control switch or something like that. It's got two wires plugs into the accumulator here. So right now the pressure is low because it hasn't run in a while and it should activate the compressor, right? So the compressor is over on this side. And uh, yeah, so I, you know, I mean, I went as far as cutting the connector off using jumper wires just in case I was getting a bad connection there but you yeah, see now that electromagnetic so what happened was apparently there's a bad connection in this switch this is the old one okay and uh, although I was getting voltage enough to light my tester it wasn't getting enough voltage uh, and that threw me all off because like how come I'm getting voltage and it's not working maybe I need a new clutch so I ordered a new clutch right well I don't need the new clutch so yeah I was working on it till I like, got dark last night and finally figured it out uh, it's this switch over here so what you do is, uh, what you do, just to check this out, is short these two wires together and see what happens. You know, cut a little piece of wire, a little jumper wire, stick it in there and loop it. And it should activate the clutch without the engine running. Ta da Alright, so now I know it definitely needs needs a charge now. And I need to put the connector back on. See I thought I had a bad wire or something in here, a bad connector. That's why I cut it off. Just monkeying around with that for too long. Should have looked at the obvious, but like I said, I got thrown off with using this tester because I didn't have enough power. It would glow, but not bright like on the battery. So that takes care of that. So I uh, put it back together, fix the wires, and uh, since I since I took the intake off, I was able to get in there and uh, loosen the the screw on the uh, hose clamp and give it a twist so it's hitting sitting higher. See how it's sitting higher now? Slight adjustment. That's all it takes. I only put this, these zip ties on there temporary because I didn't want to get into it and start taking everything apart. And so I got to tighten some stuff up like this. I don't know why this is loose. That's loose. This thing, look at it. It's missing a bolt over there. Right there. Yeah. So, little stuff like that, you know. Hey, it's a learn as you go thing, right? Now, I took air conditioning and refrigeration classes about 30 years ago, so I know the basic fundamentals of air conditioning and refrigeration.
So there she blows, yeah. All cleaned up. Now you gotta remember this is original 24 year old truck. So the paint job isn't perfect. It's not bad, but it isn't perfect. The hood and the cab, the top of the cab are, could use a repaint, but uh, I'm really not gonna worry about that. Those are my tires and wheels on there off my Bronco. So before I start taking parts off, any more parts off the Bronco, I'd like to sell it just the way it is for $6,500. Now I've had some people interested in it, but they also wanted to know about my other Bronco. I want to know if I'd sell the other Bronco with the stipulation that it, everything, that it, yeah, as is, as it is right now with the light bars and all that stuff. The suspension, the life bars, these wheels and tires. I'm like, I could do that, but I'd like to get at least five for it in that case. And then I'd still want six for this one. Mine has a bit more power than this one. Mine's got 180,000. This has 205,000 miles on it. See the hood? But it's straight. Now if I had money to, to blow, I just have the whole thing painted. And, and it'd be nice to do a full restoration on it but just don't have the money so that's what's going on there look at that what a beautiful day right doing here I should be out somewhere roaming the countryside right it's the best I can do it's Sunday go for a little walk in the park here kill some time yeah. kick the shoes off stay a while right 